Welcome to uh, a Me? new uh, <laughs> campaign. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hide the picture that says we're playing Full of Radiance because I forgot to edit that. <laughs> it's been a very busy day for me. I have not actually had time to technically prepare the server and stuff for today's session. Okay, we're, do, um, we're doing that. But that's alright. I've got, I should have everything except for but that. I gave anyway. you the skeleton. Um, but anyway, uh, for those uh, so that should watching, help. this is a new campaign, uh, but we are the Dungeon Force podcast, and uh, well, especially some, I usually have everybody introduce themselves before uh, we start, but I want to do things a little bit differently. Um, because of the fact that we have uh, new characters, um, I'm going to have everybody introduce themselves, but I'm also going to have you guys uh, tell uh, a little about the character in the aspect of what is it that they are doing here in the, uh, the white city known as Demando? Where are you? What are you doing? That sort of stuff while you're introducing your characters. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, start off with the first person. <laughs> oh, uh, and again, my al alphabetic order is uh, dooms me. Hello, I am Card, and this time I will be playing uh, playing a Kenku Rogue by the name of 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 Irvin. That's Dr. Ivern Rockclicker Jones. He's an, he's an archaeologist. He's an archaeologist by trade. And the reason why he's in the city of Dem of De of the White City of Demando is, well like he's like he's just come back from a, from a small bit of dungeon di di of of ruin di of ruin diving. Hit a hit a hit a hawk off a, a, a couple of ancient ar a couple of ancient artifacts here. Get get a drink there. Huh. Like find like find a new job, you know, you know, make you know, make sure he does, and you know, reassure the guards that yes, yes, I'm here for legitimate business. No, I'm not going to steal anything. I have legit, I have a legit PhD in in archaeology. Please, like, please, like, you don't have to worry. <laughs> okay. Oh, and uh, one other thing before we leave, like, you know, like if they, if anyone actually encountered him before. But like before in the city, he would be handling this little deacon himself. <laughs> because he is in fact a kookaburra kenku, and I am addicted to, to, to humming that to myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Gunner. For this campaign, I'll be playing the traveling, uh, the tr the traveling musician, the traveling musician Ophelia. Honestly, it didn't really, honestly, didn't really have much of a reason prepared beforehand of why she's in Ni Thy Moon, though. Uh, get, I uh, guess she's just looking for new, for new tunes and instruments for inspiration. I guess that and maybe. That and maybe still some hearts along the way. She is the group's part after all. <laughs> so you'd probably be hanging out at like a tavern or something. That and she also that and she's that and she's known for a different genre of music than than usual during this time. You will see once we get to level three. <laughs> okay. Jace. Uh, yes, I am. Let's see here. I am playing a Sphinx Harbinger thing named Emosis. And pretty much his deal is he's an anthropologist. So he's pretty much out to see new cultures. Pretty much anything outside of whatever dusty tomb he was uh, probably either guarding or assisting in guarding, I'd imagine, at this point. <laughs> and uh, has seen pretty much everything the desert has to offer, which. <laughs> All right then. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Miss, and 
am playing Self Fury Vera. A few interesting things about her. She'll only respond to her own name. She never wears shoes or anything else. And you'll never catch her with a pint of beer. <laughs> Or you see, Siri here. Not your normal adventure. Guess what's known? Of course. And He'd never admit. <laughs> Sorry, you cut out quite yeah, a bit. Completely cut out there, so we didn't hear any of that last part. No, I'm sorry. Um, I believe it cut out when you mentioned the class. Yeah. Said something about you wouldn't catch her with beer, and then it cut out. Thierry is a miss. He's not your normal. Yo. But she'll also never admit her class. There's just a small thing about Mystics are not well received. Yeah. So, as a form musical entertainer, her skills line up as ever. <laughs> We really need to get missed like a new. Puppet. Yeah, at this point, yeah, really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that Let's bit. just put it to you this way, Mist. Your microphone is not pleasant to for long expl for long talks. Yeah, I we got the gist of it. You're a mystic. Um, you know, you, you you wouldn't admit to that because obviously mystics are not well received and uh so you pretend to be a musical entertainer she has a lute yeah she has a lute um but yeah it's uh, and she's actually really good playing the lute <laughs> <laughs> oh it almost seems like it's getting worse steadily um but yeah anyway i decided to stay i made that choice to me Mm -hmm. yep. All right. Uh, I am Rake, and I will be playing as uh, the Tiefling Sorcerer or Sorceress, uh, Molly. And pretty much. Drawing. Uh, to start. Yep. It's. Hmm? Oh, Mister, you addressing us or? or you? No. Okay, good. Just mute your mic then. Anyway. Anyway. So, Molly here, uh, she might seem familiar from one of our uh, previous uh, campaigns. Um, pretty much this is her uh, a couple years after uh, those events. Uh, she's a bit older, a bit wiser, and she's on her uh, own now, uh, doing her own adventures. So, yeah, she's in Daimondo. Uh, it's really one of the first big cities she's uh, ever been to. All right. My go? Yep. Okay. Starting to wonder for a second. <coughs> <coughs> Ryuo here again. <laughs> erratic as it usually is. This time around, I will be playing a bestial by the name of Abaddon. A bestial wolf, I should be more specific. As for him, he is a forge cleric. So, blacksmithing is the name, and it is his game. Mm. As well as being an Inquisition member for said forge cleric. Right. This will be fun. <laughs> because no one expects the Forge Inquisition! <laughs> no, no they don't, until you're a smuggler and find out you're on the wrong side of the hammer. Right? Heretical swords! 
kill all the heretical sword. Yeah, you tag along on all the missions. Uh, I think it's more about the smithing on that part, but yes. Computer. As for why Abaddon is the character's name this time around, and no, no relation to the weird orc god. Well, also admittedly, the uh, the orc god is Abaddon as opposed to Abaddon, so there's a difference. Or the weird thing that always that tends to hang out in the abyss and is usually kind of all about death, destruction, and doom. Weird guy. <laughs> yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> right. Indeed. All right, as for why Abaddon is in the city, he just finished up a job for the... Well, what would you call that? Would you call it a clergy, or would you call it a forging association? It's technically a clergy, because, because like, if it's a religious order. Right. True. Well, just got done with a job for the church, and there is now several people smuggler-related in a prison cell now. So he's on his way back out, <laughs> and to figure out what he's doing next. Okay. That's pretty much it for me. Okay. All right. And I am Wolfie here. I am playing the druid pixie known as Nova Darkwing. Um, this tiny little icon here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep, that's him. Um, the reason he's in the city, um, say he likes traveling a lot and thoroughly enjoys messing with the lives of mortals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alright. So yeah, that's what he's here to do, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Alright. Um, and I am, uh, you know, Serene Inc., uh, the one that made this campaign, the world that they're playing in, the city that they're in right now, and much, much more. Um, so then, uh, w what can I say about Demondo? Well, uh, the buildings are, um, the, they're made out of... They're either made out of a white brick or they are painted white. Um, this is one of the reasons that the city has become known as the White City. Um, beyond that, there's of course the the White Knights that are the uh, they're basically the the soldiers. Um, I mean, they're the the knighthood as opposed to you know the the generic guards and things like that. Um, but the, the White Knights are, you know, big, strong individuals, things like that. Um, they are the, the, the main, you know, strong force of the, uh, the army of Daimondo. Um, uh, all of the White Knights, of course, are led by the king, uh, Armando Jensen. Um, he is, again, the leader of the, uh, the whole city in general, really. Um, rules alongside, uh, his daughter, the Princess Emerel, um, who, uh, when I, uh, have her token, um, you'll notice that, uh, uh, she's not supposed to be an elf, but um, the 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 design of uh, Princess Zelda looked uh, perfect, so I used that. Um, if you guys uh, go up to the uh, top left corner of the map, you'll see uh, images of King Armando Jansen and uh, Princess Emerel Jansen. Um, once again, these are the NPC cards. Feel free to take notes. And, uh, of course, the generic notepad for taking notes beyond just, um, NPCs. Um, holy crap, we're, holy crap, we're gonna be working for King Arthur. <laughs> uh, that said, I, I mean, yeah, he is pretty, uh, pretty similar to King Arthur in how the, uh, the city is run. Um, but that said... He, uh, King Armando Jansen may be the king, but the leader 
of the White Knights themselves, the, uh, the royal captain, if you will, is actually an orc. A uh, big green skin guy where you know wields an axe. Um, his picture doesn't have white armor, but that's because well, that was this is the best I could find. Um, but uh, yeah, that is Captain Orber Galloway, captain of the Royal Guard. Um, again, leader of the White Knights, yada yada, and um, you know he big wig basically. Um, mm. Let's see. Uh, that said, um, the city of Daimondo is probably best known for not only the 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 white buildings um, or the fact that the entire city is huge. I mean, we're talking from the the top of the city here to the bottom of the city here is about three miles long. So it is ginormous. Um, but not only is the city itself ginormous, uh, the castle, Daimondo Keep, sits up on a hill um, surrounded by a six foot wide wall. Um, beyond that, uh, there is an entire section dedicated to the Temple of Emos. Uh, those not immediately familiar with Emos. Uh, Emos is also known as the Keeper of Law. She is one of six of the Creator Gods. Um, uh, her m most noted domain is Knowledge. And her symbol, which sits high atop the uh, uh, cathedral or whatever you want to call it, is a golden scale that is in perfect balance. Um, a sunstone and a moonstone have been replicated in the scale, though they are not real. Um, but uh, it's supposed to represent the idea of perfect order and law. Day and night, life and death in perfect balance so um that said there are several other things that Daimondo is known for such as the uh the garden of ondo um as well as several well-known taverns shops and things of that nature uh, it's, it's one of the biggest trading posts on this side of Genosa. So, you know, just about anything you could ever want to find is probably here. Whatever magical item, whatever, um, thing you're looking, you know, non-magical thing. Um, I mean, the only thing that you might have trouble finding would be, well, the only thing that you would have trouble finding and probably wouldn't be here would be like artifacts and you know legendary stuff but you know if you're looking for a plus three magical sword or something i guarantee you it's here you know wow <laughs> so i guess I mean, that's why my character was sent here in the first place that's this is pretty much a help for any kind of smuggling for any illegal materials yeah yeah i can kind of i can kind of so, see what he's here too this is probably filled with plenty of culture so oh, yeah. you're saying I can fly around invisible, sprinkle pixie dust on it, and take the items for myself? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not. I'm not saying there might be an underground, uh, yeah, uh, tra like tra like uh, tra like trader, a black market that that Ivern might know, but there's but there might be but there might be a black market that he might know. There's a fairly high chance that there there is almost. Definitely a, a rather large and very powerful black market within the city, yes. <laughs> um, so uh, one thing that uh, it might be noted about the Temple of Emos is that it is uh, ran by the Grand Paladin, uh, Selin Galanadel herself. Um, 
if you're not in, you know, sure what a Grand Paladin is, well, it basically means that you are the head of Paladins. You're, you're the strongest Paladin, you're very strong, um, you know, the, it, it, let's just say you're OP as crap. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, she, she trains a lot of Paladins here in, uh, the uh, the Temple of Emos. In fact, a lot of the people in the Temple of Emos are paladins. Um, there are obviously clerics, but still. Um, that said, uh, uh, each of you is uh, a, you know out and about in uh, the Mondo doing your own thing. Um, so. Uh, let's have some fun. Let's go with uh, some initiative order with this. Uh, Nova. Because you have an initiative of 23. Um, just as far as what we're doing, I guess? Yeah, pretty much. Just, you know, where are you in the city? What are you doing exactly? You know, are you, you know, sitting there chatting it up with merchants? Are you <laughs> playing pranks on some poor oh, you know the, civilian? You know the pranks are being pulled. <laughs> right. I say he's probably, probably at the market, like, moving stuff around on the stalls <laughs> use it like he's making it smaller with his pixie dust and then moving around on the stalls right <laughs> and just putting pe putting stuff places so that everyone starts arguing with each other <laughs> uh one of the things that i liked to do when i had my pixie character whenever the dm would have a stop at a tavern um, she would use, I don't remember which spell it was, but this was back in 4th edition. Um, but there was a spell where you could, like, talk, and it would come out from, like, a different location. And she would do that all the time, and she would make, and she would, like, cast a spell on, like, somebody's, like, mug of ale or something, and make the, the mug of ale start just talking. And, like, press the digitation? I don't think so. It was... I, I think it was something that was... I don't think it got moved over. I think uh, the equivalent okay. to it now would be Minor Illusion. Ah, uh, okay. you, like, make sounds and stuff, but... Yeah. I, I don't remember what spell it was. I don't think that particular spell transferred to 5th edition the way that it was. Yeah, this so. is something I like doing with uh with my pixie because she was definitely a prankster. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of going that way with Nova here. But yeah, yeah, he's pretty much just taking stuff from me, everybody's stalls and hiding it on <laughs> other people's stalls. Alrighty. Call, causing a ruckus. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, while you're doing that, uh, Ophelia. Yes. Once again, what is it that your character might be doing, you know? Uh, probably, probably, well, in the same market, probably just trying to earn some, like, some extra co coin playing, mu uh, playing music All on right. a corner or something. Um, in that case, go ahead and roll me a, uh, quick performance check. Yeah, I wish that when you copied tokens, it would copy their initiatives. Yeah. That would be great. 25. 25 on that performance check. Nice. All right. Yeah, people are uh, people are swarming around you. They're enjoying your music, that kind of stuff, you know? Uh, osmosis. Uh, right. Uh, so uh, for the say. most part, if anyone ever uh, speaks to him, he's probably only going to mention something in riddles at this point, because at the moment oh, he's... right. Jace can't see everything going on tools. Yeah. Uh, is there something <laughs> I'm missing that I should probably know about? Not really. 
Not really, just random whatever is going on. Okay, I got it. Uh, so he's probably otherwise sitting somewhere, probably straight up. Uh, hey, Card, would you say that our characters probably met at some point? Considering both of us are scholars of one description or another, dealing in civilization. Yeah, perhaps. In which case, he's pro. Count, count theory in the scholars, because no map. <laughs> so, got it, all the scholars know each other in this party. <laughs> in, other words, in other words, he's probably scampered off from the party, went to observe some people, and then decided to sit down at some table somewhere with both the Necronomicon cracked open and his other journal and is cross-referencing things from his Book of the Dead, uh, his mentor's notes in his journal, and the section that is for his notes occasionally writing things down. <laughs> okay. Irvin. Oh, boy. Irvin is, 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 is going about... Is going about about the market, looking like like just looking through the stalls. I can't, I can't, I occasionally yo, know, cl occasionally clicking his, his beak to try to try and see if there's anyone who would be interested. I clicking his beak and speaking in something uh, in a bit of, in a bit of code messages asking, hey, is, like I've got something essentially if these can't be saying, hey, I've got something that might be interest that someone might be interested in. Can you direct me? I'm new in town. Why can I not left click? Wow, I don't know. It's just all of a sudden my like left click is not responding. Right. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little distracted trying to figure out why I wasn't able to left click on the map anymore. It's working at the moment. Um, so you said he was out in the markets talking to people? Yep. Alrighty. Uh, I can, uh, you know, occasionally asking someone if, you know, sort, of, sort of coded if Beeves can't, hey, is there, like, is there, is there a auction house anywhere nearby? I've got some, I've got some, I've got something to hawk. <laughs> it's, uh, like, anyone who can't speak Beeves can't, he's just... It sounds like, you know, he's just spat he's spouting, you know, bird gibberish. Right. Because, you know, it's like, oh, it's a Kenku. Mm. <laughs> right. Um, well, yeah, I definitely think that, uh, you know, the thieves would be able to direct you towards the, uh, the thieves guild. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, he, I keep by be a Heading, heading off there, you know, probably what's either the last, either after, you know, Sayuri Se either gets he gets bored just, you know, like following him, or if he manages to lose her because, you know, not going to be rude and, and you know, try and try and, and try and ditch a person, but he's also not going to compromise his more, his more <laughs> loose ties to the law. Right. <laughs> All right. But, but otherwise, like, like anyone who sees him, well, he's pretty much just just sit, just saying to himself <laughs> as he's walking through the streets. Right. All right. <laughs> Siri. Um. Well, there's a reason I said she's quite good with a loot. She's an entertainer who is popular. Right. So, Siri actually would have found her way to the town. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I believe she said she'd also find her way to the tavern. Find your way to the tavern. Alrighty. Because I remember that's the tavern. Yeah. Yep. The red building. Yeah. The, uh, the important buildings I have marked from last time. I was going to rebuild this whole map and I had it and I just found the rebuilt file but I never saved it as a PNG file so I don't have anything anymore except for the uh, the old map so um, but alright so you're just hanging out at the uh, the tavern there Oh, um, she's performing? Yeah, I was just going to say if she's performing you can go ahead and give yourself a performance check 
Yep. And because she uh, was in a town, a nomadic, and just her fish from her moon, at least till a long rest. To either choose it again or choose something else. Hmm. Check her There's no one I trust more than you. Two. You're a fine first officer. Twenty-four. All right. That was a nineteen on the. <laughs> All he right. He doesn't have a charisma. Right. <laughs> no, you've got a. You know, you, you've got a good amount of people just you know hanging around watching. Listen to what you're playing and things like that. People are enjoying your music. I'm still having weird left click problems. Maybe my mouse is dying. Um, so, uh, Abaddon, I believe it was. Makes it easier. You can just call him Abe. <laughs> right. Just don't make any Lincoln jokes. <laughs> Four score. Anyway. Four score and seven hammer swings later. <laughs> so, Abaddon. What about your As for him, he's... Well, as I said, he got done with that last job. And I, right now, I think he's just kind of poking around to see what we can find as his Inquisition training tells him. Right. So he's probably poking around in the low town area to see what he can find on any illegal smuggling of rare materials. Alrighty. And Molly? Uh, Molly is pretty much uh, just doing some sightseeing. Alrighty. Uh, where would she be sightseeing? Um, hmm. Would she be exploring the the garden? Would she be exploring the more rural areas? I would say uh, she probably encountered no. Well, she did encounter Nova, uh, but she probably wandered off. So she's probably in the gardens now. Probably in the gardens. All right. Alrighty. Um, so, each of you is, you know, doing your own thing, hanging about, you know, enjoying your days. Um, your time here in De Mondo has been pretty peaceful. Um, the, the White Knights and the uh, the regular guards tend to be pretty stout, you know, on the ball, whatever the word would be, for, you know, when something bad is going on. Um, most disputes don't seem to last more than a few minutes. Um, very, very rarely is there some kind of major, you know, brawl or something that really erupts into severe injury or beyond um things are things are you know pretty peaceful around here um let's see that all changed when the fire nation attacked <laughs> oh dear lord <laughs> it's been too long since we've had a good bandit raid <laughs> oh my god so, um, as you're all going about your business, um, you notice that, uh, the, the sky begins to darken, you know, dark clouds begin rolling in, um, some of the merchants begin calling out, a storm is coming, a storm is coming, um, you hear thunder and see a bit of lightning in the, uh, you know, the, uh, out in the, um, the, the distance there with the clouds and everything. 
Um, at first, you know, it just seems like, oh, just, you know, a storm on its way, whatever. Um, that is, of course, until you notice something rather unpleasant begin to fly over the city. Um, it is a very, very massive dragon. Um, and when I'm saying it's a massive dragon, I mean like... So this token here that I'm using right now is large size. But it's equivalent to about the size of the dragon in relation to the size of the city here. Oh, um, lovely. So it is gigantic. It is uh, colossal at, uh, at least. If I had it as an actual token, it would probably be, you know, this size. Um, but um, the, the first thing you notice about this dragon is definitely the fact that uh, it has no skin. It's all bones. Um, you also notice that there's a lot of electricity coming off of its body. Uh, its two, uh, its two eyes are, um, actually, hang on a second. I have a, a better description here. Um, let's see. It's a colossal dragon made of bone and magic. Where the eye should have been in its skull now sit nothing but a sorceress light. So hollow it can chill even a seasoned warrior to the bone. The dragon's wings are bare, save for decaying wisps of cartilaginous webbing that stretches between the bones. Its body seemed to emanate magic and electricity all along it. Um... Yeah, I feel like that's a little bit better of a description for you. It's uh, straight from the novel version of this campaign, by the way. Um, so the, uh, the earth heaves and shudders beneath your feet as the creature flies over the city. It soon finds its, it soon stops as it reaches the castle. And it, uh, Blah, blah, blah. I can speak really. Um, it drops down onto the castle, its claws leaving large indents in the stones of the towers. Um, when it crashes into the uh, the wall, you feel another great heave of the uh, the earth beneath your feet. Um, Hang on, I don't think this is up to... I actually don't think that this uh, is up... Uh, section is up to date in the module. So, um... Let me, uh, get the, uh... Um... Actual up-to-date version here. It should be right around here somewhere. Nope, I, um... Sorry, I'm looking at the uh, the novel version of this campaign, and uh, I was definitely looking in the wrong section. Uh, I was looking in chapter three. This is chapter two. Um, so uh, it, its bony jaw opens and it begins to speak. Demondo, long have you believed yourself to be the most holy city in existence? Long have you believed that this holiness protects you from harm. Uh, the dragon reaches down and picks up a child who begins squirming and crying. Uh, the dragon speaks up again and says, Look upon me in despair. I am Verok Zul, the bringer of death. I have come to fulfill what the oracle has written within the book of prophecy. In the 300th year of the third age, the 300th year, whoops, that's supposed to be like way later. In the, uh, the at the end of the first millennium of the first age, a dark dragon will appear. The dark dragon shall shed innocent blood, and the dead shall rise from their graves. Tremble mortals in despair as your city is now overrun with the dead. 
Uh, he releases the child from his grip, and the child falls until it strikes the ground with a sickening crack. The entire earth begins to shudder beneath your feet, and all around you, large, or not large, but uh, bony skeletal hands begin to rise out from beneath the ground as the undead, both zombies and skeletons alike, begin to rise. Okay. Uh, my character pretty much just makes a uh, pretty much uh, ass, although again, probably to no one in particular. Wait, if all the dead are supposed to rise again, what are the tomb keepers supposed to keep? <laughs> <laughs> oh well. So, the dead are not rising inside the building, right? No. But the voice was definitely big and booming enough that the entire city. Even people inside were able to hear. Okay. Nova's hiding it. Mary isn't seeing what's going on, but has an idea. <laughs> yeah. At this point, Emos is just like, well, uh, I guess that's one job I don't have to return to. <laughs> no. <well. laughs> so sarcastic. So long. <laughs> that. <laughs> that that was pretty messed up, actually. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um You begin you immediately begin to see the clearly l living civilians uh begin to scream and run in run around in terror and as uh you know the undead are rising um, several guards around you, uh, quickly grip their weapons and shields, um, preparing to fight. Um, can Ophelia try and, like, rally some of, like, any civilians near her to get them to, like, go into order or something? Um... Emily? Yeah, you could attempt that. Go ahead and do a persuasion, and yes. Can Siri go to the window of the tavern? Uh, Can 26. It's a bag full of bubbles. I fucked up. Sorry, you cut out. Said something about going to the window and then nothing. Magic stone. Magic and sling. You may have to type it. You're still breaking up. <laughs> uh, sorry. So you said uh, Ophelia there. You said it was what again? Persuasion? Um, a 26 on a, a 26 on a persuasion. Oh, nice. All right. She has, prof she has proficiency. Right. I mean, even with proficiency, that's still really high. That's well, it nice is a plus goal. seven. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying that must have been a nice roll, um, even with like proficiency and stuff. That must have been a good roll. Um, that said, uh, um, okay, okay, I get it now. Uh, yeah, you can. You you should be able to move to the uh, the tavern window. Start using your magic stone um, with your sling there. Um, Cause cantrip. Yeah, cause cantrip <laughs> is great. Um, so Ophelia, you managed to rally some of the uh, the townsfolk around you together. I think, that would, um, say, I think that would probably have brought Nova over, too. Alright. Um, while you're doing that, uh, one, of, uh, one of the white knights, actually, uh, rushes up to you and says, um, anyone who can 
uh, quickly make your way to the castle. Uh, Amosis pretty much wraps up his stuff, puts all of his notes away and stuff after, you know, copying down the speech that the dragon gave and all that. Sort of stands up and is like, well, I suppose I'd better send the undead back to being dead, otherwise my men will get on me about it. And then you just hear him crack his whip across the ground. Let's go. Siri, go outside at this, during this? Right. Um, Ophelia kind of just gathers whatever coin she managed to make and just like keeps playing music on the way to the castle to like keep everyone together. Right. Neville right. will grab one of the piece uh, coins as well. <laughs> that okay. might have been left behind. Hmm. Technically, I was with the Thieves Guild, so. Right. <laughs> that's, uh, so that's going to be interesting when I eventually show up. <laughs> Demosis pretty much steps out like, well, Siri, you coming? We should probably also, we should probably, hmm? Siri's on No, the Siri's side. not there. Yeah. Siri's in the tavern, right? Or has she already stepped out? Yeah, I'm at the tavern. You Where didn't did I... say you went to the tavern. Where did I end up putting my character? Uh, as far as I was aware, just off in the streets... I did say table somewhere, so I guess that was kind of vague, although I guess I kind of figured the only really decent tables worth sitting at were probably at a tavern. So, yeah. well, well. I mean, there are multiple taverns, and I can put you with Siri in, with Siri in the tavern she's in if you want. Yep. I probably would have headed back over there after a time. So, yeah, I probably would have been there by this point. Alrighty. I think that was the uh, implication. Both of you together, then? Yeah. Siri, Siri would look at him and say, Go outside during this? Are you crazy? <laughs> well, what other choice we got? Like I said, these undead probably need to go back to being, er, well, dead. I'm sure Osiris and is. I've completed. been working on that. Well, I'm going to take outside. After all, probably whipping, pe whipping undead through a window is not going to be the most effective. <laughs> and besides, we need to go find... What is ah, Card's character's name? Ah. Uh, Irvin. Irvin, yes. Thank you. Besides, we probably need to go find Irvin. <sighs> Let's go. All right. You can come if you want to, but I'm heading out. And he pretty much walks out the door, spreads his wings, and starts flying away. <laughs> Right. So yeah, if he starts flying, Siri's not going with him because he can fly so faster than she can float. Right. I can walk faster than you can float. I, I can. I've got a forty feet movement speed. <laughs> yeah. Sphinxes are mobile. Sphinxes Incredibly. are mobile creatures. They are. Siri is mobile, so but she fly. doesn't like showing off her teleportation. Plus, someone has to save Irvin's, Irvin's tail feathers. <laughs> oh, if only you knew. Right. So, Siri is staying at the tavern while Zosa <clears throat> flies. Alright. And um, she's just going to continue bringing the enchanted stones at the undead. Right. If he occasionally sees some like weak undead that look like easy things, <laughs> he might occasionally swoop down and crack a whip across them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just like basically picking out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a whip has reached, so yeah, I can really just sort of safely dive down and just sort of whip at them for a little bit. <laughs> because if I know the bar or keep here, they won't let any undead. Whoopsie, I typed that wrong. If I know the bar keep here, they won't let any undead. <laughs> Uh, yes, whips do in fact have reach. How about that? Um, <laughs> so, Simon Belmont with wings! <laughs> Woo! Yep, you see, I mean, you can reach out to ten feet. Um, quick, quick, one of the, quick, uh, Ophelia, start playing Blade's Ears. <laughs> um, sorry, play what now? Blade's Ears? Cad, theme of Castlevania. 
Uh, never mind. Sorry, the only ca- <laughs> like I only really know one Castlevania theme, and that's Simon's theme from fo- from Super Castlevania Four. I think that's, that's right. it. Right. I'll pull it up later. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, Siri, oh. um, the uh, the uh, the barkeep here, um. She goes by Hilda Gainsborough. Um, so uh, she's a, a bit of a bigger woman, I will say. Um, <laughs> uh, she, you know, uh, she has a a fairly large, you know, she's uh, she's fairly well endowed, um, but she's also a bit on the uh, the heavier side as well. Um, Matt said. Um, as the undead are kind of making their way towards the tavern and everything, uh, you see her, she kind of gets up from her spot there behind the barkeep. She, uh, she pounds her fists together. Um, the, uh, the doors to the, um, the, uh, the tavern burst open as a group of people... Dressed in these uh, dark black cloaks, walk in. Um, a lot of hush for a moment uh, throughout the tavern as they uh, enter. Um, you hear her say, "It's up to y'all if you want to stay here or not. But if you're here to cause trouble, I'll be seeing you out the door quicker than you can say troll sweat." Uh, you only have to watch for a moment before the, uh, the ones in the cloaks obviously begin causing trouble. They begin, uh, they attempt to grab tables and throw them about, which particularly fails due to their lack of strength. Um, one of them grabs one of the, uh, tenant's cups and throws it across the room, uh, to which you watch as the, uh, the barkeeper, Hilda there, just kind of walks up to one of them. She pounds her fist into her hand, and with one solid punch, the man goes flying straight out of the tavern and several, several feet down. Uh, she calls out to the others and says, You still want to cause trouble? Uh, a, a brawl ha- uh, picks up suddenly between the lady and uh, the, the, the cultists, as they appear to be. Um, needless to say, they're all just basically thrown right out of the tavern with, you know, ease. Not a one of them can even get close to even trying to touch her before they get pounded. Um... It is very clear that she is ridiculously strong. <coughs> yeah, like I said, <laughs> uh, if I know this barkeep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she uh, she turns to the tenants uh, with a smile and says. Any of you, any of y'all that want to stay here and seek refuge, go right ahead. Don't worry, nothing's getting in here. Um, that said, um, let's see. Uh, we've basically covered most, but uh, we haven't covered Irvin, Molly, or Abaddon yet. Um... So, uh, um, uh, let's, uh, let's take a gander over to, uh, Abaddon here, since, uh, he's the furthest away. Okay. So... You know, uh, what, are you, what is uh, Abe doing with the, uh, you know, 
sudden influx of undead everywhere? Well, first of all, Abe was in the middle of the streets doing <clears throat> his thing, trying to snoop around. Suddenly, undead are starting to go around after he sees dragon up in the air. And the only thought he comes to mind when he sees the dragon fly by is like, well, there goes my day plans. <laughs> and thus, I mean, I figure by now any of the knights have been telling people to head towards the castle. Right. Just about here and there. So Abe's going to make his way towards the castle. And each undead he manages to come across, he's just going to swing his hammer, take its head off, and continue walking. <laughs> All right. It's just a swing here, a swing there. They're decomposed. They're not going to stand up to a hammer going across the skull. This just going to dodge and fly away. <laughs> um, Molly? What? Um... Good question. Um, <laughs> I would say Molly, uh, when she sees all these uh, uh, undead popping up, uh, she's definitely going to uh, try to get to safety um, while casting a couple of uh, cantrips, too. Sounds good. And uh, Irvin... Sorry, I forgot I was muted. Well, I was with, the, yeah, I was with the thieves guild, so he'd be like, so he'd be like, uh, 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 so you know, he'd probably be hearing them mention something about the about undead. He's like, uh, but uh, I got this. This just ha this is ruining my day, <laughs> right? So, like, so are we actually so are we actually good good to be hauled up here? Or should we? Or should someone? Or should someone go out and see and see and see if the god is doing anything? Um, the, uh, the chief thief would definitely inform you that the, uh, in the case of something like an undead assault or something like that, uh, the Thieves Guild is definitely not a place that you want to be, because it is, it, it might be well hidden, but it's definitely not, uh, protected. Uh, right, right. Uh, <sighs> Made an excellent decision to go look for Irvin rather than stay there and defend and hold up with uh, <laughs> Siri. Right, right. Uh, he's he's like, oh, I guess I'll, oh, that's the case. I guess I'll guess I'll take my chance with the well, with, with the with the with the authorities. Yep. Well, gentlemen, ladies, uh, hopefully, hopefully, if you get 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 through all this, I'll be seeing you again. But for now, <laughs> uh, peace. Yeah, like he, like he, like he, more or less ducks out of the um, uh, uh, out of the um, uh, out of where the thieves guild is. But it looks like he, he tries to make it look like he's co he's just coming out of out of, uh, out of a uh, out of a um, uh, out of you know any random uh, alleyway, and then it looks you know quote unquote surprised to see uh, to see undead. It's like oh, this ain't good. Just so in case there's eight guards around, it's like, oh, this ain't good. <laughs> What's the likelihood that Amosis would end up actually finding you? Um, probably not very high at the moment. Um, that said, um, while Osmosis is looking around, um, you do run across a, uh, a Pegasus, specifically an equestrian Pegasus. Um, you see, she, uh, she has a wand in her mouth, um, and she's kind of waving it around, trying to cast spells here and there, just little <coughs> cantrips. Um, as she sees you come out of the, uh, the alleyway, uh, you see her kind of spit her wand off, and she turns to you and says, uh, hey you, quickly. We need to get to the castle. I'm looking for a colleague of mine. You think you could help me before we do that? Oh, sorry. That was uh, that was at Irvin. Oh, yeah. at Irvin. Okay, so yeah. sorry about that. And, okay. and like, yeah, Irvin's like, ah, it's like, ah, like, ah, sorry, I didn't quite actually hear that. Could you repeat that again? Uh, so um, yeah, you know, uh, Pegasus here. Yeah. Uh, when you come out of the alleyway, she's sitting there kind of waving a wand around in her mouth, casting spells. 
Um, she kind of spits the, uh, the wand off to the side as she then turns to you after seeing you and says, um, hey you, we, the, the, the guards are calling for everybody to retreat to the castle. Hop on my back. I'll take you there as fast as possible. I think mean, that's a good idea, Sheila, but, uh, but, uh, I will mention that I haven't, that, you know, I can't go out and fly well, in a while, and you know, he he says that a little bit nervous, ner nervously, uh, you know, kind of go, you know, walking towards the question. But uh, but if you think that's a good way, then well, uh, then well, be my wings for for, for a moment. Last, uh, but I don't think I don't think we've met. Can I get a name? Uh, she says my name is Maya Starlight. Nice to nice to meet you. Nice to meet. Nah, yeah, pleasure to meet you, Miss Starlight. No, like nah, name's Evan. Do Dr. Irvin Rockclicker Jones, to, be, to, to use my full name, but most people even call me Irvin, Dr. Jones, or Rockclicker because at that point he starts producing a sound from his throat that sounds like, you know, uh, like uh, rocks clicking to clicking go, like someone trying to start a fire because of that. Uh, Maya smiles at you, um, gives you a, a quick bow with her head. Um, she quickly picks up her wand. Um, and puts it back into her saddlebags, um, and rushes over to you so that you can hop on her back. Mm -hmm. Um, once you are on her back, she will take off into the air, uh, flying over the, uh, the city. Um, <laughs> hmm? Like, he is, uh, uh, Irvin just got laughed. Like, oh, I haven't been up this high since I, since I, since I, since I set off that one, that one trap during my first, during my first, during my first ruin run. <laughs> <laughs> um, as she arrives near the castle, um, you begin to see the, uh, the other, uh, people that you may or may not be familiar with. Uh, beginning to arrive. Uh, in particular, um, you <clears throat> in particular, you notice uh, Osmosis flying towards you. Yeah, uh, Arvin will sort of, will sort of he'll produce from from his throat sort of, sort of uh, 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 Abedus's own voice. And it's like eh, like hey you, mm -hmm. and. Uh uh, okay, Irvin is mimicking someone else. No, he's mimicking. Uh, um, uh, he, he's pretty much mimicking um, uh, uh, your voice and try to get your attention. Like, wait, did I say that, or did someone else say that? As soon as he hears that, he's like, "Wait, oh, it's Irvin," and he flies down towards you. Hey, Irvin, decided to mimic my voice today, have you? Yeah, at least, uh, yeah, at least to get your at least to get your attention. The, uh, the, no, the, <laughs> bad, but. Uh, but, make know. sure, make sure you mention where your other colleague is. <laughs> he's like, uh, so, he's like so. He's like so. Uh, where's the, where's the self gal? Uh, like I thought, like I thought, like didn't she, like didn't she, or did you two get separated? Apparently, hmm? this place is swarming with undead now. Ugh. He's like, I decided to come out and hunt for you. She's held up in the tavern. If you want, we should probably take a swing by there and pick her up before we. We should probably head on over there and meet up with her. Yeah, I think. Yeah, if the gods leave and let, if the gods leave and let us back out, yeah, this place looks like I've seen, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen tombs with less, with less strict security measures. <laughs> well, the only reason why I got over here safely is because I can fly. Uh, no. the reason I got here is because uh, the, well, the, this like the shield right here. It's, uh, like this is Mia Starlight. It's, uh, like she's a Pegasus, but but from what I from what I saw, she can do a little, well, do a little bit of that magecraft. <laughs> ah, one of the one one of those one of those winged horse types. I see. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> uh, Maya gives a bow with her head and says, "It is a pleasure to meet you as well." Right then. Uh, uh, where are we anyway? We're not at the gar We're not at the castle yet, are we? No, uh, yeah. you're you're by the castle, but you're not in the castle yet. No. Okay. Well, you would still I, be able to go out and pick up uh, 
Siri before going into the castle. Would around this time Abaddon manage to walk up on them after knocking the undead left and right? Uh, yeah, probably about this point, Abaddon and all the others would start congealing around the gate. So, yeah, well, it, I was like, well, oh, looks like, oh, 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 looks like we have company. <laughs> looks like one of those uh, uh, animal mixed with people things. And uh, what else is? What, who else do we have here? Uh, Ophelia is kind of just playing. Is kind of just playing music near the gate to draw more, to attract more people. And what's that music coming from? Oh, it's one of those. Uh, he pulls out his journal. Let's see here. Fay and what subspecies of Fay are you? I think Ophelia is just a human. Is Ophelia? Oh, is Ophelia human or? Okay, Ophelia is human. Yeah. Wolf is playing the Fay. Never mind. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and uh, a normal person. <laughs> yep. Funny yeah, enough, no. Ophelia's playing just playing the playing acoustic metal on a guitar. <laughs> yeah. Weird Nova, instrument. No. Nova kind of flies <laughs> over to uh, Asmos's face. He's like, and, "What are you?" Yeah, as soon as he, as he says, like he starts swatting at you, and he's like, "Wait a second. He's oh, hey now. Girl. Let's see here. Fay and what sub race of Fay are you? Pixie. Pixie. He's like, oh. Pixie! Okay, that explains it. <laughs> and closes his journal and tucks it away again. <sighs> hmm. Abaddon at this point will go up to one of the guards and ask if anybody has been left behind from the evacuation so far. Um, the, the knights will tell you that they are still working on evacuating. Um, there's definitely still other civilians out there uh but they are doing their best to get people in uh, uh Irvin's like is like is like yeah is like yeah miss yeah <laughs> ah, ah, like ah, ah, me, ah, me friend but uh but but my sphinx but my sphinx colleague and i left left someone left someone out left this attack someone out in the tavern well just we he did i was off doing a few <clears throat> uh, things of my own uh, but now i now I think, no, he could give us the general direction, but if you're worried about about the people there, that'd be a good place to start. Lead on. <laughs> no, no questions. Just just that gung ho about it, eh? <laughs> so, I wonder if I at least at least bit more details, but yeah. Ah. I see it at this point. Undead are traveling everywhere. The quicker things get done, the less people die. Now <laughs> get moving. Meanwhile, outside the tavern, there is a growing. Pop- Zombie and skeleton. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Amosis just sort of uh, spreads out his wings. I guess he's like, "All right, I'll make sure to maintain support from the air. Let's go." Irvin, Irvin sighs and thinks to himself, uh, "Well, well, Irvin, you really stepped in this time. Yeah, well, better, like better, like better stay face and get and go and go with him. Otherwise, otherwise, man, someone might get." Get it, uh, uh, Mike? Like get suspicious. Plus, don't like the look of that guy. The armor. <laughs> <laughs> Afraid of the Inquisitor before he even knows it's an Inquisitor. <laughs> dude, Molly, dude, who's uh, blended into the crowd, is uh, as she sees uh, everyone leaving. She's like, "Oh, I wonder where those folks are going. I might as well go too." <laughs> I say Nova's probably just riding on someone's shoulders because he doesn't want to fly. <laughs> uh, That's exactly what Leary did, except Leary had a dedicated person. <laughs> right. Live on! <laughs> um, so, uh, you all make your way over to uh, the tavern. Uh, Pegasus in tow. Um... And, uh, you know, well, you all arrive at uh, the tavern with that. Uh, with you arrive at the tavern where there is a rather large pile of zombies and skeletons just around. <laughs> They're all dead. Uh, Irvin, lo- Irvin looks at, l- looks at, uh, uh, as Mielsen, like, he's like, he's like, 
I was like, I don't know what he's like. Now I'm no expert about about this town. I just got here myself, but uh, it looks like either a we, there's a there's a paladin on account for, or b the tough <laughs> like the toughest the toughest bartender this side uh, like like this like this uh, like this side of the Great Divide. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, most of them are series kills. Uh, to that, Maya will actually respond and say. Uh, Actually, now that you mention it, I haven't seen any of the paladins around. Uh, well, then this would be the time Abaddon would pipe up. Well, I'm going to assume most of the paladins went to go fight that dragon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that seemed like the most logical thing for them to do. I mean, get, I mean, they, I, they are the ones with the with you know, with you know the touch of God and, uh, and all and all that. Yeah, no, not this way to anyone's face. It's just. Yeah. Yeah, when you when you're cursed by a, when your entire race gets cursed by a god, you get a little bit touchy around the subject. <laughs> but regardless, so, <clears throat> when Siri sees the party approaching because she's at a window slinging, she he so kookaburra kookaburra sitting in the old um, tree. <laughs> well, he, he, he immediately he replies. Uh, king of the brush, uh, uh, king of the brush is, is he? He laughs. A kookaburra laughs. Kookaburra, a joyous life he leads. <laughs> and then continue. Uh, yeah, then the, yeah. he would join him at the end of that. Like, yeah, Moses would join him at the end of that. <laughs> he, 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 at that point, he's like, ah, see, like Siri. Yeah, good see, good see you safe. Nice to see that you held out here, although the barkeep looked pretty tough, so I wasn't too terribly worried. Oh yeah. You guys now see a floating skull, because Nova decided to go get a skull and make it float. (laughs) By flying inside of it. There's a good fear her undead Roman Hmm. At that point, Abaddon would see the floating skull, thrust hammer forward, just hard enough to crack the skull, but leave the pixie completely untouched. <laughs> Aww, that was my toy! And he splits in half and falls over. <laughs> that was my At new which, toy! Uh, Molly, after seeing Nova again, she will say, Ah! Oh, hello, Mr. Pixie! Oh, hi there! <laughs> Did, have we <laughs> met? <laughs> I, we have! Don't you remember me? I was in the market the other. I was in the market an hour ago. Oh yeah, I remember now. Uh, yeah, you're. Uh, <laughs> where'd you go to? You kind of just left when I was having fun with all the people in there. Oh, I just wanted to do some sightseeing. Oh. I was in the gardens when the uh, when these uh, undead buggers attacked. I see. See, uh, but well, yeah. It looks like we've got a bit of a bit of a group here right now. But we should probably make, we should probably make our way back back to the castle just in, just in case. But <laughs> I can. But if you want, but if you want to stay here, that that don't bless that don't blame me. I mean, like I said, tough as tough as tough as beside the Great Divide. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you say that, all of us need to get out of here. I get the feeling, no matter how tough a barkeep this one is, numbers will eventually work out. Can't fault you. Can't fault you with that logic. So what? Do, so what do you suggest? We cut like we carve a path before. We cut like. What do you suggest? The, well, wait, then you suggest I'll just simply put, gather yeah, all the civilians in the center, all the fighters at the rims. Escort everybody back to the castle, cut through them while they're still thin in numbers, and pray to dear God that they do not amass in the next five minutes. Uh, uh, one small problem with you. One small, I see one small problem with your plan. <laughs> uh, this, like, this, like, despite my looks, I'm no, I'm no fighter. I'm just, I, I'm a, I'm a scholar, I'm a, I'm a scholar, an archaeologist by trade. <laughs> I know, I, I know my, I, I can avoid traps like the best of them, but, uh, but in a fight, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be that much use. Very sort of. 
Well, I may, uh, well, I may have uh, armor. My <laughs> oh, is a slingshot. Tomorrow we'll start you on a new social exercise, developing your robot to be even. Abaddon, you now feel many fighters here. Abaddon, you now feel a skeletal hand on top of your head. <laughs> <laughs> Abaddon just sighs and like, oh, for the love of stripes. <laughs> Aw, oh, does the doggy not want a bone? I've got a case of class two claustrophobia. Abaddon then grabs the bone and breaks it over his armored kneecap. <laughs> Aw, you're no fun. Yeah. Wrong yeah. time to be joking around, Pixie. Or perhaps I will use you as a distraction. Oh, now that is even meaner. <laughs> uh, yeah, with the, uh, you, can't, you can't fault him too. <laughs> I too. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about you. What about it, man? We like, 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 like a lot of, like a lot of, a lot, a lot of clerics and paladins seem to, you know, like seem to have a, seem to have a, seem to have a little, a little bit more rigid than most. Siri, I'm gonna say, well, I heard rumors that the uh, asking everyone to so if they can. Theory with and to everyone else. into the cast. If you'd like to come with us, that's like that's really loud again. We're receiving a distress call from the away team. They've been involved in the shear line of the nebula. Hmm. I'm back. What did I miss? Uh, I think every, yeah, I think everybody's starting to move off towards the castle. It sounded like. Yep. Yes, knocking things around as we go. Right. Both of us they can actually knock things around. <laughs> Nova's Nova's taking a skeleton leg now. <laughs> oh. Alrighty. Um, I will note. I will note that uh, I like Ivor. Sorry, not Ivor, but Irvin is is purposefully, you know, uh, playing up the fact that he <coughs> is is playing up the fact that he that he's that he wouldn't be that good in a fight. But if so, like, but if need be, he like so, like occasionally they would see you know an arrow come sort of like hit like a, a, either either a zombie or or, or a skeleton in the skull eh, and not know where it came from. <laughs> Right. Um, as you make your way back to the uh, the castle, um, you do note that uh, the skeletal dragon Varakzul is fluttering high above the castle, um, flying here and there. Uh, occasionally, you witness as he rains his. Uh, lightning breath right down into the city uh demolishing buildings people and other things alike um eventually though you do manage to finally arrive at uh the castle um as you make your way through the gates you are greeted by a white knight uh, he gives you a bow and says, My name is Lytus Salinas. Um, <laughs> kind of name to suit your occupation there, bud. <laughs> he says, uh, um, The king has taken notice that you all have been working to... Uh, take down the undead as you've been making your way here. He would like to speak with you. Well, the, well, I wish the best, well, the best of luck with that, with, with you lot. <laughs> I'll, try, I'll, I'll just find a place, to, I'll just find a place to, to come yep. along, Irvin, let's go. <laughs> then he'll just sort of drag you now come, oh. now come, Professor dear. You know me. I'm just a musician. Yeah, time to my part. <laughs> I'm not really one to meet people either. 
<laughs> Come on, you two. Let's go. You don't exactly deny it. You don't exactly deny an audience with the, an, an audience with the king. Yeah, good point. That would that's <laughs> true for most cultures. Yeah, yes, that that would be, that would be a rather bad for pa. And it's and it's doctor by the by the <laughs> theory, not professor. There's a difference. Let's go, professor. <laughs> I think now. this should be fun. <laughs> now you do. Why well, did you want to see the castle after all? You like you like you like like you didn't grow up in the city much, did you? Did, like, did you, Sheila? <laughs> My name's not Sheila. It's Molly. It, it's a colloquialism where I come from for for a young girl. But nice to meet you, Molly. I like ah uh, like Ivan Doctor Ivan Rocklicker Jones. But please call me Ivan. <laughs> All right then. At that point, Abaddon will look to the guard as well. Right before they head in, do report this to the church. Tell them we may need reinforcements of higher white caliber. <laughs> if we can get a message out of here at all. Um, the Lydas will actually say, actually. I think that's one of the things the king wants to speak with you about. Interesting. Didn't figure I'd be back in the audience hall twice within an hour. <laughs> so as you make your way through the castle, um, finally arriving in the, uh, the throne room. Um, the throne room is quite impressive. The entire room has been built of the same... Excuse me. The entire throne room has been built of the same white brick of the majority of the, of the castle thus far. The entrance to the room has been a large set of double wooden doors, both with gilded metal bars that went across the top and bottom of the bar of the doors. The long red carpet stretches out across the floor until it reaches a small set of stairs. Hmm? Yeah, I thought I heard something. Um, carpet then follows the uh, six stairs up until it reaches a heightened platform where three thrones stand. The left and right thrones are smaller, clearly meant for a prince and queen to sit upon, whereas the central throne was twice the width of the side thrones and has been encrusted with gold and jewels on every part that is visible that was not covered by the red cushion that lined the seat and back of the throne. The right and left of the throne... Uh, to the right and left of the throne sat suits of gilded armor and a golden white curtain hung behind the throne. To the right of the throne, you see a small table with four seats. And to the left of the throne sits a desk with a chair. Sitting in the chair is a woman, no older than maybe her <laughs> early 30s. Uh, she wears a pair of glasses on her face and is dressed in a rather regal-looking dress. The dress is white, save for the golden trimmings on the top and bottom of the dress. Two straps come off the top of the dress and around the woman's upper arms, leaving her shoulders bare. The quill and ink sit upon the desk, along with an assortment of papers stacked in different piles. You can guess that she is probably the scribe that records the king's proclamations. Uh, looking up to the ceiling, you see a pair of chandeliers dangling from above, each a round metal bar with lit candles attached to the top of it. Wall-hung torches sit on the left and right walls, allowing for some extra illumination of the room. See, um, you then notice that uh, the tile work of the floor is intricately placed to create a swirling symbol in the center of the room. Um, in front of you, sitting upon the main throne, is a tall man, for human standards anywhere, anyway, uh, wearing a white robe. He has a cape attached to his back that is white with golden trimming along the edges, and a golden crown encrusted with rubies and sapphires in alternating patterns around it, along with a single emerald in the front that sits higher than the others. Sitting next to him is a blonde girl wearing a blue dress that has uh, white 
sleeves. Um, she has a, uh, a smaller crown, a little tiara around her head. Um, the, uh, the man on the throne stands to his feet and says, uh, Welcome. I am King Armando Jansen. And this is my daughter, Princess Emeril. And about this point, Abaddon would step to the side slightly, more into view, and then speak to them both. It's good to see you both are still in good health at this time. Uh, King Armando will nod and say, It is fortunate that none of the undead have been rising here around the castle. However... As the city continues to be overrun, we fear that they will eventually turn and begin marching here. While the, while the castle is fortified, it is still more than we can handle ourselves. As we know, the dead in this city are countless. And unfortunately, for every death, every living person that dies, it seems that the dead continue to grow. Uh, this is quite a uh, at those words, the doors to the throne room suddenly burst open once again. As you turn around, your eyes fall upon a rather large green muscular orc entering the room. His massive body is covered in an even larger suit of silver and gold armor. Tucked under his arm is a helmet which has the symbol of a phoenix on the front of it. The orc grunts and says, Well met! I am Captain Orberg Galloway, Captain of the Royal Guard. <coughs> Abaddon turns to look at him. Hello, Galloway. <laughs> um, Ophelia just does a bow with her guitar on, hanging off her back. <laughs> um, yeah, he also bows. <clears throat> Molly will curtsy and then say off to the side, I didn't realize orcs could be so polite. <laughs> After hearing that, Urban chuckles like, add, 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 Eh. That was uh, kind Ophelia of kind of just says you'd be surprised actually <laughs> Nova's just gonna fly around his head <coughs> like looking at him trying <laughs> right um, as he uh, continues his way up towards the throne uh, you see him chuck his helmet into the uh, the absent uh, throne uh, he then leans on it and uh, turns to uh, Armando and says, Well, suffice to say, things are not going great out there. You just start seeing the helmet float away now. <laughs> uh, um. I mean, at that point, uh, Moses would probably think the pixie and uh, whip at the pixie with his whip. <coughs> Behave. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's hey. mean. <coughs> time, and pl time, and pl time and place, little one. Time and place. We are, in, we are in the presence of royalty and his, and the captain of his god. <laughs> what do I He's care? Well I don't, I'm not one of them. <laughs> uh, they could stick. You, they could probably stick you in a jaw for a, for at least a week if, if you don't behave. <laughs> and for that, you know, he just sort of, um, almost like snatching him out of the air. But a, but a Moses kind of reaches out to him and then just sort of whispers the matter of polite etiquette into his ear and saying, you know, what you are doing is well, also mean. <laughs> it's not mean. I'm just <laughs> curious. Yeah, you don't like it. You know, he'd just sort of whisper that. Hmm. And then snap back to it and where he was. Okay. Um, so, King Armando 
kind of looks over each of you and says, um, I noticed that, uh, I noticed from reports from my guards that while you were out in the city, you were doing what you could to help take down the undead attacks out there. Yeah. Well, what can I say? A hammer here, a hammer there. Things just <laughs> tend to fall over. Yeah, the background music really helps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was giving comedic le- relief with the skulls. <laughs> and for what I could do, Your Majesty, unfortunately, I'm not particularly quite vested in fighting, but my whip can at least handle the weaker ones. Um... Yeah. Hmm? No, nothing. Like, like, uh, like, Urban is, keep, is keeping his beak shut. <laughs> um, King Armando, uh, kind of looks at uh, Orber for a moment, and the two kind of uh, exchange a nod. Um, Orber turns to all of you. Um, he grabs a uh, a table from one side of the room and drags it into the middle of the uh, the throne room. Uh, he then draws out a map of Demondo, sets it on the, uh, the table, and then draws out a dagger and stabs it right into the, uh, the map. Um, he says... Um, sorry, let me... Uh, let me uh, look at. Let me try and get this uh, this idea right here. Um. Do 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 do. Mm-hmm. So I, I am kind of using the novel a bit to help me out here. Um, just because I mean, I wrote this as a novel, so I'm trying to use some of this. Um. Nova's currently sitting on the dagger now. Well, Molly's gonna uh, say to the say off to the side. He's ruining a perfectly good map. <laughs> oh no, that must have been the old version where he did that because I don't have that in here. Tell me about it. It seems like he's got a little bit of anger management issues. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so Orber looks up from the map and says. Uh, uh, all of you, tell me, tell me one thing that you have noticed is missing out there. Yeah, yeah, you paladin. Um, order. <laughs> um, Orber will uh, nod at Irvin and say, "Exactly." Despite the fact that we have an entire temple full of those blasted paladins and their clerics. For some odd reason, none of them, not a single one, has stepped out of that temple to help. Uh, uh, Irvin points to Abaddon, to, uh, like, and sort of gives this look of, what about this one? <laughs> I am from the Inquisition. I am a forge cleric. <laughs> uh, Was it uh, the like, Spanish Inquisition? <laughs> no, it's a... Yeah, no, it, Irvin's like, huh, the Inquisition... Yeah. Like so, like, like so. Yeah, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Do you suppose we can ask them really nicely? Um, Orber gives the uh, a, a bit of a snort and says, "Actually, I have this is." Or he says, "Actually, this is what I would like to ask all of you to begin with." There is a secret passageway that leads here from the throne room out into the city. It has not been used in some time, and as such, we are not certain of its current state. We do not wish to send refugees through the secret passage, or even the king out of the secret passage, until we are certain that it is empty. It's, uh, until we are certain that it is clear of anything that might be hazardous. We would, we would like it. Uh, 
Uh, he says, um, as such, I want you to travel through the secret passage, take down anything hazardous, and make certain that the passageway is clear. Irvin's Ar gonna is gonna look to him. He's like, you do know I'm a I'm a cook about a kenku, not a canary, right? Because this is the sort of thing you send canaries to do. <laughs> but but hey, it's a it's it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a request directly from the from the captain of the guard. I'd have to be suicidal to think to to, to deny that, especially especially during this especially during this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Orber will snort and say, there shouldn't be anything gaseous that is hazardous. Mostly we just want to make sure there's no rats or spiders or whatever else could be down there. Uh, oh, for the love of the, the giant spider thing again. Is the orc afraid of spiders? Yeah, uh, uh, Urban's like, uh, Urban's like, hold on, you are, have you not seen the size of some, of some, of some of the some of the spiders like me? Some of the spiders? I'm surprised you're not afraid of them. Yeah, I swear. What's your point? I can turn into them eventually, <laughs> just not right. Like, oh, I, okay. uh, anyway, um, how thick is that uh, stone slash door into the secret passage? Um, Orber could. East could tell you that the uh, the secret passage is about ten foot wide. I am at the thickness of whatever's in my of whatever's in my way. Like, say for example, that door. Oh, um, let's see. Orber can tell you uh, the uh, the doors inside of the tunnel are all made out of uh, steel. Um, he does have keys, um, which is another thing he mentions. He says, the, because the passage hasn't been used in some time, we're also not certain that the doors will open right away. How thick did uh, you say the doors were? Uh, well, they're made out of steel. There may be two or three um, inches thick. Um, whatever the size of like a standard deal steel door really would be. Um, but he would, uh, uh, to that, he would literally just chuck a, uh, a set of keys to somebody random. Uh, I'll take it. Nova. And uh, oh. he'll say, uh, these are the keys to the doors. Once again, the doors are quite old and have not been used since the reign of the previous king. Well, that is, well, 40, 50 years ago. They are likely, yes. they may be rusted or solid or things of that nature. You may then you have gotten trust. very lucky. A forge cleric? <laughs> Mending? Yeah, that thing's popping open. Right. I believe the detect evil and good spells are ritual, is it not? Uh, I can jack. Spell. Detect evil and good. Um, it is no. not, no. Oh, that's a very silly one to not have as a ritual. Okay, then. Yeah. Never mind. First level divination, casting time one action, range self, concentration ten minutes, and then it actually says ritual? No. So. Okay. Well, actually, well, in that case, once he opens that <coughs> once he opens that door, he's gonna go um, once that door is open, he'll probably go ahead and cast that. Alright. Um, I mean, that does only detect aberrations, celestials, elementals, phase, fiends, and undead, but... Uh, let's see here. Well, we are surrounded by undead. You know what? Never mind. He'll, he'll just hold off on that. So never mind that. Not to mention, you've got someone who's, who's, who's part infernal and a fae, and a fae right, right in the party. Right. I mean, I'd probably be able to tell the difference between them, and I imagine I could sense... Because I, I imagine it allows me to sense locations of those things. But 30 feet. Yeah. What did I miss? 
<laughs> it, I was it, debating it, whether it would let you determine like where they are. <coughs> um, yeah. Um, Yeah, the, don't these, clerics these. have something like that on autopilot? Paladins do, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's paladins that have it. Okay. So. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah. And that can still probably hold off on that because that's kind of a waste of a zeal point. Right. <laughs> Alright. Um. So yeah, uh, Orber will lead you to the uh, the secret passageway. Um, that said, uh, while he the uh, when he begins to lead you, um, Maya Starlight uh, steps up to all of you and says, uh, "If you would like, I can come along with you and help you out." Uh, like Irvin shrugs, is like, eh, I don't see what. Like, well, sure, I don't see what. I don't see what the problem is. You want, if you want to come, go right ahead. But if not, eh, I ain't stopping you. <laughs> eh, the more the merrier. Alrighty. Yeah. Um. So I have a uh, a passageway down here. Um. You should be able to see it. Yes, you can. Cool. Cool. Um, you can feel free to, uh, distribute your characters in whatever order you would want. Maya will definitely be eh, further in the back. I will say, uh, Nova is not to great. Hmm? I know. Yeah. Nova's yeah, not he's... set to grid. Um, yeah. I was, saying, I was probably going to be going on top of people a lot of times, so. Yeah. Um, if you want, what you can do is offset the token a bit like that. Yeah. And that way you can have it, um, separate and stuff. So. It must have probably be towards the middle of the group and in the air. I don't know, how how high is this passage? Not tall. Not, not tall at all. It's really walking. only maybe a 10 foot by 10 foot passage. Eddie, you're walking. So. In that case, yeah, he'd be, uh, in that case, yeah, he'd be, um. I think I'd be the Probably only towards the back. I think I'd be the only one flying. Yeah, you're the only one who could fit and fly here. Yeah. So yeah, I'd be in the back then. Okay. Away from all of the things that would possibly one shot me, aka everything. <laughs> I feel a little sorry for Abaddon, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm a walking tank with a hammer. Anything you're the only me, tank. Much. You are the tank. You are the Rescuers. tank. Yeah, I noticed this. <laughs> the I'm also able to heal to myself, too. <laughs> I feel sorry, but that's what this is what my first campaign was. Except I was the tank. And I wasn't <laughs> playing the tank character. I was playing the ranger. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, not sorry. The I don't got anything well, to worry I about. Mean, I can heal myself. When you have the highest AC out of everybody, even if you are the ranger... <laughs> Mine's always going to be a maximum of 16 unless I get magical items. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, so you make you guys make your way down the, uh, the secret passageway. Um... As you make your way along, the secret passageway is clearly very old. Um, there are cobwebs and all kinds of nasty stuff along the way. Um, you do eventually come to a, uh, a door. Um, a large steel doorway. So. so maybe those keys will come in use. <laughs> yeah, I was asking card something real quick before I went and poked the key through the lock. Right. 
which AC skill are you referring to? Uh, I'm referring to the uh, you magic. Thank you. Could you repeat that, please? Uh, I was uh, referring, I was referring to, to imbue in imbue magic, magic on a weapon or armor. That has to be done during a long rest. <laughs> I thought that could happen at any point, but it ends at a long rest. No, no, you have to do it during a long rest. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which class is he again? He's a forge cleric. Forge cleric. Forge cleric. Right, right. Yeah, I don't have that downloaded. That is uh, uh, you. Uh, you uh, I thought you had a half heart. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's a half heart right now. Oh, is that. That's right. That's uh, what is echoing? echoing. Yeah, well, we got echo. Yeah. Miss is echoing a little bit. What is it open now? <laughs> I've literally not changed anything. No idea. I don't know. Nope. No clue. It's suddenly started. Sounds like it's done now. <laughs> you spoke too soon. Yeah, you had to say it, didn't you? Yeah. Da 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 da. Cleric, cleric, cleric. That spider. That's druid, so it must be before that. Here we go. This is cleric. So we're looking at forge cleric. Uh, blessing of the forge. You gain the ability to be imbue magic. At the end of a long rest, you can touch a non magical armor that is a suit of armor. Until your next long rest, or until you die, the object becomes a magic item. So you. When you take a long rest. At the end of it, that's when you imbue it, um, and then when the long rest ends, uh, that's when the magic fades away. So. Okay, so I wouldn't be able to use it now, even though we haven't even had a long rest yet. <laughs> right, we, we haven't had yeah, a long rest yet, so you wouldn't be able to even use it. Okay. okay. Uh, the way I've been doing it is, I, for some of my things, the... Reset at a long rest, so I've had Yeah, you... I was going to say, you could consider... I mean, you've had this ability for a while, um, so you could say that, uh, you know, you did it at the beginning of the current day or whatever. So it could be something that's currently active. Uh, we can go with that. Done. Yeah, like I put... Like I've mentioned a couple times, for nomadic... Series, no matter and gives her two professions or legit. Right. Very long rest. And she also has a falling die from her. So. Yeah. I yeah. Falling die ready and, and do it. The proficiencies from her class as performance and investigation. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, you could have already activated your Blessing of the Forge on something already if you want. Alright, we'll go with that, and I'll use it on my armor to jack my armor rating to 19 for temporary. Alright. Um, alright. So you are currently at the door? I will put the key in the door and see if this thing will work. Alright. Um, let's see. Is it, like, super dark in this hallway? Uh, it is dark. Um, I am assuming most of you have dark vision and or are carrying a light, though. Yeah, so I got... I cast pretty much dancing lights. Yeah. I got I dark vision, so I'm good. Yeah, no, like... Like, uh, if it wasn't for the fact that I'm, uh... Oh fuck it! The, the the pixie is using dancing lights. Then um, uh, uh, that then Irvin would have would have cracked a torch. Yeah, <laughs> I mean there are also torches along the walls, but none of them are lit as nobody's been down here in a while. Okay, so. knowing I knowing Ivern, he would have you know, he would have you know uh lit one of the one of the unlit torches that the they started to carry it with him. Right. Um. 
Um, at that point, Amosis would, uh, would suggest, you know, maybe we ought to, since this passage is intended to be used later, maybe we ought to light all the torches as we go. <laughs> Good idea. Indeed. All right, Lightbringer, start lighting the torches. <laughs> You know, all things considered, I should just should have just kept Ophelia with press digitation because just like the torches easily, I think. <laughs> um. Well, uh, uh, anyway. Um. Yep. So, uh, you no, wait, yeah. stick the Sorry. key into uh, the doorway. Um. It does take a moment of working it with the key. Uh, but you do eventually get the door to open. Um, I don't have this, uh, open, apparently. I didn't open my... I only opened the campaign module. I didn't open any other PDF files on accident. So one second while I, uh, do something here. Um... So, uh, behind the door, uh, you see a rather large swarm of rats. Um, that said, <laughs> uh, the rats take one notice of, uh, uh, you know, how many of you there are. The, uh, the torch that you're carrying, you know, the light you're producing, and so on. Uh, they screech very loudly, um, and then quickly scurry away. Um, so uh, there's that combat completely avoided, because they failed their fear saving throw. <laughs> and uh, just to kind of look at them all run away, I'm like, oh, for once, I'm like, I have to squish a rat. <laughs> <laughs> he might, uh, Emotions might occasionally just whip yeah. at them just to hammer it home. <laughs> Aw, I wanted to play some more. So that was supposed to be a combat, uh, but uh, they have to roll a wisdom saving throw against fear, and they failed, so there's that. Um, well, I guess it's not so much fear, because technically they are immune to being frightened. Um, but, but they were just like, oh shit, run! Yeah, basically. Um, so it, it's kind of this like, they were shocked, they, they rolled a saving throw to not be shocked, they are shocked, and so then they flee. So wait, okay, you they had to pass a disregard your own life check. Right, something along those lines. I mean, <laughs> we're a pretty big party, I think, at this point. It's kind of like, rats, meh. Yeah. Um, well, there's that. Uh, so, um, that whole thing is, uh, just, you know, you just go right through that. Um, so that was an entire counter skipped over. <laughs> um. Things happen. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Uh, so, uh. You make your way through the, uh, the rest of the passageway, lighting the torches along the way, you know, clearing out cobwebs and things of that nature, uh, until you come to a, uh, a very sudden and very abrupt wall. Just looks at wall. <laughs> Love. Uh, I guess I'm just gonna... Now, Unseen Servant Time, very certain, is a ritual, right? Yeah. Yes. But, uh, not necessary. Uh, like, Ur Urban sees the law, he's like, oh, God, not this old trick. Okay, stand back. Like, stand back. Wa like, watch wa watch professional at work. Yeah, like, he sort of... Cra like, he's, like, he's, like, he sort of just rubs his towns together. He's like, okay, let's see here. And investigation check for on the door. Okay. Ha! First roll of the night, and I get and I get a twenty three nice. uh, with my proficiency modifier. Um, with very little difficulty, you notice a small stone protruding out of one of the walls. <laughs> he, he, he's like, 
he's like, he, he, he sort of rolls his eyes like, hey, watch this. He, like, he hits the, like, he's, like, he's, he sort of, you know, he, he sort of, you know, hits the, the, the wall where the, where the, where the, proje- where the protruding stone is. Hey. D- uh, to the, sorry. The, uh, the ceiling above you opens up and a ladder, uh, rises out of the floor. The ladder stops right in front of Abdon's face, <laughs> like only two feet from it as it drops to the ground. I'm like, yo, it rose out of the ground, man. Yeah, it rose out of the ground. Oh, uh, rose out of the ground. Up okay. To the uh, yeah, the ladder went up from the ground up to the ceiling. Yeah, Abaddon was probably stepping on in the spot and had to back up a, mi- a little bit. <laughs> uh, That's a gap. <laughs> Yeah, it's the, yeah, it's the old, it's still, it's the oldest trick, trick, like trick and roof in this, in this sort of book. Like, like, like little, like little stone jetting out. You press, like you press it. They, uh, like then, either, then either one of three things happens. Either it's trap door, which you know, bad move on your part. Yeah, like it opens, it, it opens a hidden door. Good, or 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 it does or or produces or produces a, a ladder and a way to get out. So, ladies first. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Molly will uh, take up, take uh, Irvin up on that offer. Okay. Oh, thank you. Hey. Right. Uh, uh, Abaddon just kind of looks up, up the hole before anybody goes up and is like, doesn't look like anything's up there anyway. <laughs> yeah, Moses just sort of waits on the ground for everyone to kind of get up while at the same time looking behind him, making sure no one, you know, nothing unfortunate follows them. Right. No, no nothing pets. unfortunate. <laughs> Noah pats Irvin on the beak, tell him he did a good job, and flies up the hole. <laughs> this is literally my job. Abaddon <laughs> <laughs> um, will look at him for a second. You might be useful in the Inquisition when reading Thieves Skills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thieves Skills. <laughs> skills. Right, right, right. Yeah, like, always, like, always gonna keep, keep, an eye, keep an eye out for, the, for those guys. <laughs> 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 I imagine we would actually know about that little antic of yours, at least those of us who worked with you. No, you, you know, you know that uh, that I'm very good when it comes when it comes to you know disabling traps and getting through ruins. You have n- outside of work, you have no outside of my research, you have no idea what I do. He does not talk about. He does not mix. You know, um, uh, work and pleasure. <laughs> it's Fight Club. Never we'll talk about Fight <laughs> Club. Right. Right. Um, um, Echo. Um, um, I am muted because just to say that Siri was as well. Ah. Uh, as you climb the ladder, you find yourself in the storage room of the, uh, the Red Th- uh, Thorn Tavern. The, I, I, when, they, when Ivan pokes his, his head out, he's like, like wait, isn't this the same tavern that we? <laughs> and lo and behold, that's when we see you know the like the most badass bartender in, in the city. Right. Uh, uh, as uh, you come out come of out the, uh, the storage yeah, room, room. Um, um, Hilda. Hilda. Uh, uh, let go. Uh, Hilda uh, turns. Uh, Hilda turns towards you. Um, and, uh, excuse me, uh, Hil- uh, Hilda turns towards you, and she says, uh, well, it's about time they opened that passageway up. Yeah, apparently they, did, apparently they, they, they didn't know or forgot that it was there, so, hey, refu- but, but, you know, tell the refugees that they get, that there's, that there's a quick way to the... Quick way to the to the castle and and the, and the keep and the people guiding them there. <laughs> once once everyone's up the uh, up the ladder, uh, Emosis will go ahead and take a quick flight up himself. Um, Hilda will turn to uh, all of the refugees and call out to them and say, "Hey, it's the way to the castle for all of you." Um, and then she will begin to lead. Uh, people 
off to the uh, the secret passageway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, um, there's a good, it's not uh, well, there's no oh go ahead he's like well seeing as we're back in this tavern that is already surrounded by the undead I don't believe this is a good exit plan uh, to that actually Hilda will smirk and say actually this is the perfect exit plan you see please do not tell me it's a giant <laughs> rocket do what? Sorry, half talking to myself on it. Uh, um, Hilda says uh, the me the reason why the castle leads into the Red Thorn Tavern here is first off because we are fairly near the edge of the city. Um, she says the second reason, however, uh, she. Uh, uh, again, you know, begins to, uh, um, yeah, she, uh, starts cracking her knuckles and says, Those of us who have been running this tavern, my family, believe very strongly in being strong. Uh, to that, she, uh, she chuckles, um... Let me see, let me get the uh, the correct wording here because I literally just had open and I closed it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> do, 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 do. I had it right here. It's actually listed. Oh, here it is. Um, she says, uh, first off, I am probably the strongest person here in Demondo. I have four black belts. And, well, let's just say magical gloves and boots, along with a force of about eight other goons that have been personally trained by me, who also have the same uh, tools. <laughs> uh, Ivan chuckles and looks to Davidon. Oh, like, old Demando saying, D like, D like, thou, like, thou does not fuck with the, with the, but like with the with the red thorn tavern. <laughs> as soon as he says that, uh, Amosis just cracks open his uh, journal and just sort of like, duly noted, you don't. And <laughs> just continues writing. It. Right. I'm not so worried about the capabilities of the staff. I'm more concerned about the actual path. What, lady? Um, <laughs> lady, you're very very large. <laughs> And you yeah. and Ivor just steps away from the pixie because because you know rule number two of the rule rule number five of the Red Thorn Tavern do not insult the patron. Right. And um, <laughs> as uh, as he says that, uh, Amosis just sort of chuckles jovially and is like, "Well, that might be because you're a tiny little pipsqueak." <laughs> hey, it could probably still be the crap out of you. Uh, maybe in your dreams, laddie. <laughs> wow, now he's becoming Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I call, like, like, oi, leave the, like, leave the bad Irish accent to rake. Just, like, <laughs> just, <he's gonna. laughs> well, that's fair. Oh, laddie, this is just getting right done, missy. And then, and, like, and then, hey, you're at least, at least you're Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm Scottish, too, so... <laughs> right. Holy shit. Go, go. I really know I'm not Irish because I don't like to drink. <laughs> period. That was it. actually a really low roll, considering. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that was 17 roll on a... Four on the die. <laughs> That was, that was a really a low roll. Plus 13 to hit. Wow. Well, again, there's a reason why Ivern pretty much said, pretty much listed, rule one uh, uh, when dealing with the Red Thorn, Thorn Tavern. Do not fuck with the Red Thorn Tavern. <laughs> uh, and she so, just straight up kills Nova out of nowhere. 
Yeah, that'll definitely put me down. Uh, I was going to say, uh, so that's non-lethal damage. Um, but, uh, yeah, fif uh, 15 damage as, uh, it, well, it, she just uh, swings her hand and just smacks you right out of the air. I assume I wasn't in her space. <laughs> <laughs> She does not want just, to give her disadvantage, just, but I don't know how much lower she could go. I think she just flash <laughs> up to you like the like the old lady from Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah. <laughs> and at that point Amos is just chuckling like, Oh, that's some good fly swatting you got there. <laughs> and Ophelia kinda of just catches him and just puts him puts him on her hat just for balance. <laughs> yeah, so he's uh he's knocked out now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Ivan just mutters to himself, it, but, but it sort of, just sort of sort of just clicks in, in the feet, in the in sort of a, a combination of, of Avian and Thieves can't fifth rule of the uh, of the of the red of the Red Thorn Tavern. Do not, like, do not fuck with with the patrons. Do not, sorry, do not fuck with the bartender. <laughs> right. yeah, Molly will, uh, Molly will uh, <laughs> grab uh, Nova's. Uh, unconscious body and say oh don't worry I'll take I've, I grew up with Faye I'll take good care of him until he comes to and that just puts him in her pocket <laughs> I'm very curious Mark, did, uh, no, so I was just, just going to ask whether I imagine that I've observed Irvin for probably longer than an hour right yep. in that case he cracks open his journal and writes squawk squawk squawkity squawk 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 <laughs> And he's just sort of muttering this to himself as well, <laughs> and then closes his journal. Like, just loud enough for Irvin to hear it. Um, all things considered, the theater, Ophelia could probably just cast Cure Wounds and Revive, Cure Wounds and revive him if she wanted to. Right. We could, but he'll wake up on his own. It wasn't, he's gonna <laughs> die from it. He's just out cold from an <laughs> idiot response. And we're not in battle yet, so don't really have to. Right. Exactly. Pretty much. That was four over my hit point maximum. Ouch. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I, Ivan will sort of bird sigh. Don't, don't, know, how, don't know how that that happens because, you know, bird. He right. clicks. Yeah, it, yeah, it's like, so, shall I, get back, shall I get back to the task at hand? So if I go to the clergy, find out why the, like, why there seems to be a little bit AWOL. I, I think, I think at least our cleric friend would love, at least the cleric uh, among us would would love to get, would love to find out what the, what what the what in the name of the of the various gods they like they're not they're doing. Which is closer, by the way, the Red Thorn Tavern or the castle to the uh, temple? Uh, uh, probably the uh tavern. Hmm. The castle's off, kind of on its own whole section um in the way of like actually getting out from the city the red thorn tavern is on one side where there's n actually not much space between the castle and the outside like the gates themselves um the temple on the other hand is kind of smack dab in the middle of a large section of the city so so in other words is it Hmm, that's kind of interesting. So the temple's a little bit closer inward to the city. I figure the castle would be as well, wouldn't it? Or is it more on the walls? Uh, the castle ah. is directly in the very middle of the city, up on a hill. Okay, so the castle's in the middle, the tavern's towards the outskirts, and the temple, is the temple sort of like sitting in between the two? No, it's way off on the other side of the city. Oh, it's on the other side of the city from the tavern? Yeah. Holy heck yeah, we then holy heck yeah, then the castle would be closer, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well they, Yeah, it would yeah, the castle would have been closer, but they uh, but they did also want us to ch double check the secret passage. Yeah. Well at this um at, at this he would um at this Amosis would recommend perhaps we ought to step through that passage and head back to the castle. Mm, no use no use risking our lives needlessly. <laughs> We'll head on over. We'll head to the temple from the castle. It's a little bit closer. Well, the castle's probably also surrounded by undead at this point. 
Isn't yes. the tavern also surrounded? I, I think we're both surrounded by undead, so no matter what, we're, we're gonna be stuck. We're in a medieval. By. We're in the medieval version of the of the pub from Shaun of the Dead right now. Well, I mean, this is pretty much yeah, Castle Town. Yeah, I mean the tavern with where it's at um, would have been one of the first places hit as the undead have been moving inward. Um, so by now, the majority of the undead would have moved past the tavern, move, moving towards the castle. Um, also, again, you do have Hilda over here smashing undead left and right. Yeah, like, like dude, so. I, think you're, I, think you're, I think you're forgetting that the only reason why this place is, isn't still swarming with undead compared to the castle is because is because we have the is because we have as like as Ivern has said multiple times the most badass bartender on this side of the great the great divide. Right. Yeah, very interesting. Also, it's kind of interesting to also point out. It sounds like the uh, she's better off than the uh, current guards that you have at the castle. <laughs> dude, like, dude, you know, dude, you know how many people go? You know how many people go through? Go, I go through, go to this bar, <laughs> especially uh, especially some of the less some. Um, uh, <laughs> out of character. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, this is all out of character. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's yeah. like especially some of the more unsavory parts of the like parts parts of the city. So yeah, like you know, like you know, like and even if, because they know because I think I ever knows you know do not fuck with these people. <laughs> I, I know it's, just, it's it's sort of weird that you have your king <coughs> not being protected by the best of the best, but whatever. <laughs> She's retired, dude. Yeah, she uh, she runs a tavern, and her family just ha- honestly just kind of happens to own a set of magical gear that vastly empowers them. Oh, okay, they have magical gear, which is probably yeah. more than the guards probably all have the standard issue. Well, the the white knights have highly magical gear as well. The standard guards. Just have regular armor, but the white knights also are we getting, have like magical gear. Are we just getting a little bit distracted? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's, it just seems weird that the that I figured the white knights would be cutting a swath right through at the castle, so I figured the castle would still be safer. But you know, continuing on, and that's what Emosis is gonna think. So if anyone wants to challenge him on that, that's your priority. Yeah, I mean the castle is safer. It's just there's a lot more undead there. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You probably point out that it would be safer to head to the castle and then go from there to the temple. Yeah, which you know, I would be like uh, counterpoint. Look out! Look out there! See where the dead, where the undead are all amassing, compared to where we are. Yeah, there's not as many undead here. The, like I said, they are all amassing at the castle. Is the thing. So oh, okay, the so towards. we can see them moving all towards the castle. Right. Yeah. They're all moving inwards. In that case, we may want to try sticking to the edges of the city. <laughs> and we can move from the here. Hmm. White knights are going to have a heck of a fight on their hands. <laughs> right. That's the case. My only Let's hope go. is the moment we get to the temple, we don't find a bunch more undead inside the temple. <laughs> betcha, betcha, betcha five, betcha five gold, there'll be, there'll be more undead there. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the paladins haven't been turned dead. I'm sure the Inquisition's gonna have a lot of fun, and I'm sure your report's gonna be very interesting, isn't it? Oh god! Oh god! I can only oh, imagine the paperwork. Oh, paperwork. <sighs> anyway, um, so heading to towards the temple. Yeah, I'm guessing that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's about all we can do. Sounds oh, like yeah, it. I remember what fight comes next. I technically don't have a choice in it. I'm unconscious. <laughs> yes, you are. This is true. I hey, have I'm not the, You life. got knocked the hell out. Hey, I'm not the most useless yeah. party member anymore. It's the guy who's unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not slightly useless at the, useful at the guy who's unconscious. Maya has no initiative. Um... I guess I could use my hit dice <laughs> right now. Technically, I'm resting. <laughs> but did you even... Uh, oh, no. Yeah, you sure did. You, you lost plenty of HP. You got beat over the head by us. Yeah, he's okay. unconscious. I mean, yeah, it- counterpoint, uh, Maya 
here would say something about uh, if we're going to head to the temple, we should probably stop and either rest long enough to let your friend there get up or stop and heal him before we move on. Yeah, good rest. Ever hurt anyone? All right, and we'll give more time for the undead to mass around that castle, clearing us a path. Let's rest. All right. Um, well, you know what? We will take a short rest. Uh, and um, because it is 9 o'clock, uh, a short rest is the perfect time to uh, end for tonight, actually. Oh, that gives me more time to actually work on homework. Perfect. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's 9 o'clock. We usually try to stop sometime around 9 to 9.30, and it's... I mean, it is 9. It's after 9. So, Fair enough. Um, Fair enough. For me. So, you know, it gives, us a ch gives you guys a chance to, uh, you know, do whatever else you need to finish fixing up your characters. Uh, you know, we can roll initiative again at the beginning of next session. Uh, Dark can be here, and uh, we can go from there. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. I think we, uh, I think we have found the perfect, ex uh, the you know, a perfect excuse for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, considering all the undead everywhere, I wonder where he's coming from. Yeah, and yeah, it I'm just probably gonna like went coincident. Co <laughs> I'm probably gonna like uh, out uh, one out. of uh, one of Ophelia's cantrips for prestigious hate. Pre prestigious. How the heck you say it? Yeah, prestidigitation. Thank I you. I just say press. Um, I will say this much. Um, since you guys are taking a rest, uh, Maya is going to make her way back to the castle to inform everybody that the passage is open at the castle. Um, she says, you know, just go ahead. Keep going on without her. Um, she'll be here at the castle when you guys get back. Okay. So. All right. Anybody got equipment that needs repaired? Nope. I think we didn't even break a. Sw I don't think we even broke a sweat. There was no because we scared off the rats. No. <laughs> yeah, there was no combat this session because the rats just we went away. <laughs> so, um, so I mean that was unfortunate, but oh well. I right, don't we'll combat next session because you guys are going to have to actually go out into the undead infested city. So, uh, good luck dealing with the undead. Yay, medi medieval dead rising. <laughs> how much of this part? How much of this part has changed since the last time you uh, we ran this? Uh, almost. almost. Emily, can I change? Can I tell them? Hmm. hmm? Can I tell them? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean you don't really, you don't really know, know much, how much exactly, exactly there was too, too, but... Well, you see, every other time we ran an alternate version. Yeah. Yeah. This is it, the original. The original. Yep. Yep. Original every time prior to this, we ran the alternate version of the... Anyway. Anyway. So, um, um, I mean, I mean, in regards to just, just how much how you much. guys have played through, um, the the main thing was that you didn't come on the caravan, so there wasn't one big encounter you had to deal with to begin with. Um, oh yeah, the dialogue was changed. Um, the secret passage was changed from three encounters to one. Um, and you're heading off to the Temple of Emos instead of the Temple of Teladin to meet with Grand Paladin, uh, Selin Galanadel, as opposed to, uh, the High Woofer, whatever his name was, I don't remember. Yeah, that's right. It was like, I can't remember whether we were introduced to the Woofer before or after we actually found him at the temple, because I remember that was part of the plot, right? The, the Woofer was unconscious and ill. Yeah, you, you don't actually meet him until you get to the temple and save him, so. Uh, I, yeah, I was going to say, because I, I didn't know if anyone had actually mentioned him until we arrived at the temple. 
Yeah, so. people men people mentioned them before you got there, just like they have with the uh, Grand Paladine. I, I imagine because uh, the way I'm sort of thinking, I imagine we'll probably still run into the cultists though, since they appear to be around. <laughs> they Bloody cult. They are cultists. Um, but uh, this is mostly talk for after podcast. So that said, yep. uh, for those watching on Twitch or those watching on any you know, when this goes up on YouTube. Uh, thank you for watching. Feel free to stop by every Sunday. Most Sundays anyway. We've had a couple of times that we haven't. But uh, most Sundays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we do this on twitch.tv slash serene inc. So come on by and watch the podcast live. Buy the book. <laughs> Uh, right. yeah, if you like the awesome. anime, read the manga. <laughs> we are ten- sorry. Unless, and unless stay the manga sucks like in Paris. Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah, I blame, blame Rage. Novel. So feel free to uh, buy that if you want. Um, yeah, we are technically the anime adaptation, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the anime podcast adaptation, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Seriously though, no, if 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 we have any fan, if we have any fans that that want to that want to animate on a hijinks, feel free to. Right. I feel bad for you. Let us know what happened, though. I want to read this crap. Yeah. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Ciao. Stay classy. Two times. One episode. <laughs>